don't know. I think everybody is. I think it was such a, it was just a really joyful experience. It was hard. I mean, you know, it's not an easy job. It wasn't an easy job. Um, Nightmare Man nearly killed me, nearly ended my career as a writer. Um, Nightmare Man was the story where I went, I can't write uh, because we were doing the wrong story. We were doing a story about Lucat University. Um, and I, I and Russell at that point was in LA or America, wherever he was in America. Um, so I wasn't, you know, Ru Russell is <laughs> amazing in a room. If you're in a room with Russell and you're like, oh, God, man, there's no work. And Russell basically gives you a verbal slap and goes, well, what if you did this? And you go, oh, right, yeah, got it. Um, and he wasn't in the rooms for uh, the Nightmare Man, and yeah, I mean, Nightmare Man nearly destroyed me as a writer. I just couldn't get it to work. I hated it. I couldn't make it. It was the worst period, one of the worst periods of my writing career. And then I had a quick phone chat with Russell in LA because I said, I think I'm going to have to quit. I cannot make this work. We keep having meetings. It doesn't work. And I, I said to Russell, you know, well, because Luke's at university and I have to introduce all these new friends of Luke's, but at the same time, he needs to save the day by himself to prove he's an adult. And at the same time, Sarah Jane, Clyde and Ronnie have to be involved, but they're sat outside Oxford in a B&B. &B, and I don't know how they get in under this bubble that this aliens put over the university. And, 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 and I can't remember who said what. I, I said something and Russell went, I won't do an impression of Russell because I can't do it very well. But Russell, in his Russell voice, said something like, oh, you're absolutely right. We've got this entirely wrong. I mean, the big thing for me was it was set at university. Well, I went to uh, Cumbria College of Art and Design, which was basically prefab buildings, you know, and all this stuff. And it was, they wanted the Nightmare Man sat in this sort of Harry Potter world of towering spires and all this stuff. And I was like, that's not university. I don't, I, you know, I couldn't get it to work. It was like, it doesn't work. And then we realised, oh, no, wait, the story should end with Luke going to university. It should be Luke. We even went, Russell went, of course, it should be Albert Square. It should be Luke driving out of Bannerman Road. Can he drive? Has he got a car? We don't know. We'll find a way to make it work. <laughs> so at least Sarah Jane had an old car in the attic, in a garage around the corner. She went, I've got an old car. Here you go, Luke. Drive yourself to university. That no child has ever done. No child has ever been given a car to drive to university. But... It's the emotional journey. No, no, we're not driving Luke to university. He needs to go to university by himself. And the moment we went, that should be the end of the story. It should never be set at the university. It should be Luke choosing to go out there and live his life. And then suddenly you go, right, so what's he fighting against to stop him doing that? Well, he has to be scared because you, you're scared. Going to university is terrifying. I, mean, I was absolutely broken by it. Really, really terrified me. Um, and it was that you have to face your fears and you have to go, I can do this. And then suddenly it was like, okay, so he's nightmares. Oh, there's a nightmare, man. <laughs> you know, so, so the whole story came apart. But genuinely, the, the lead up to it, we had meeting after meeting after meeting and could not get it to work. And yeah, I, I it nearly stopped me being a writer. Um, but despite that, you know, then it was a very happy experience because then worked out what the story was. And I was like, oh, now I just get to write really fun nightmares. What's what's fun? Oh, TV talking to you. <laughs> Nightmare Man's another favourite um, of mine, um, but I, I, I won't uh, talk too much about it because yeah, I'll, I'll go on forever. But I just I think it's kind of genius a a monster that a kid can't tell their parents about. <laughs> that's, well, that's I think that's. Like, because they're, they're scared, a monster that doesn't let you talk about it. I think that's... Yeah. that's uh, I mean, there was two, a couple of things to that was you you had to be careful not to go down it being abuse. You know, you had to be careful of, mm. it's, it's it, you know, don't... Although there are elements of that, you know, there is an element of that, of uh, a child being unable to tell an adult... Um, uh, sorry, uh, a child being unable to tell an adult something that another mm. adult is doing um and that uh, actually if you can tell the adults it's better you know that's always a uh you know a subtext of it um but there was a discussion it was i'm not very um i'm quite wussy as <laughs> i back down often uh it was on a few times i stood up to someone and um there was this discussion of why doesn't Luke? It was always there's always that thing with Doctor Who and Sarah Jane Adventures. There are so many ways you could switch off the adventure right at the beginning. So the Nightmare Man starts. Luke turns around to Sarah Jane, Rani, and Clyde. He goes, "Oh my gosh, 
this man in my nightmares last night was talking to me. How do we stop this? Mr. Smith. And once you've got Mr. Smith, and as I had in that story, K9, once you've got Mr. Smith and K9, you're just like, I mean, literally, how are they not shutting this down? So we had to, so I had to find a way of um why can't why doesn't Luke tell them? And I won't say who, but it was a member of the production team, and their response was Luke's embarrassed by the nightmares, so he doesn't tell them. And I was like, no literally the point of this episode is Luke's an adult and as an adult he's been through all these alien invasions and everything like that as an adult he's going to tell them about it he's not going to be embarrassed by having nightmares oh and I went, no it has to be the nightmare man stops you being able to tell them and stops you being able to write them you know it's like everything what would he do he'd try and write it down and that was a great way to mention Maria again because we always like to bring back Maria it was like he right he can't write it down and he can't tell them about it. And I remember this discussion with this person and this person going, but why can't he? And I was like, well, because that's just what his power is. His power is you can't tell them about the nightmares. I just don't believe that. And I went, well, you know, nightmares are in your brain. This is a brain thing. So it's connected. I just don't believe it. And I went, he's an alien I've created. If I say he can't tell, if I say he's got the power to be telling you about him, then just accept that. That's, you know, it will work. Um, <laughs> Fine, the, and we gave it a go. It turns out it worked. Yeah, <laughs> you know. it's the it's the old argument of like, how do you kill a vampire? Well, however the fuck you want, because they're fictional. It's fictional. Do what you want. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's very much that. But also, it was very much my thing of going. I always felt like I, I, I liked to write the kids as older um, rather than younger, um, which I think you got a great set uh thing throughout the series because phil ford wrote them as younger phil phil wrote them as younger and jokes and puns and everything like that i write them as a bit older and a bit more so you've got a nice cross over the whole series it was brilliant it was a, you know it's a great um uh team thing and uh you know my thing was i am not having luke ashamed of nightmares because that mm. is such the wrong message to be sending out to children watching not just because of the subtext of Oh, I'm ashamed to tell you that something is happening to me. Um, you know, that shouldn't be mm. something you should be ashamed of. Uh, so yeah, so I won that battle. Hooray. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. Yes. Um yeah. just speaking of the Nightmare Man, one last thing. I because there's there's probably gonna be like someone listening to this wondering about this. There was uh the final scene of the episode uh you spoke about. You probably know what I'm uh, gonna ask. Um, the there was scene. <laughs> yeah. the exchange where um, uh, Luke. Uh, what's uh, what's the line? Sarah Jane uh, talks about him having a girlfriend, and he suggests maybe a, a boyfriend. And she says, "Well, as long as it's not a Slovene, I'm happy." And can I can I say, Joe? How dare you? How dare you be, have Sarah Jane be against the Slovene? I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, should have dated a Slovene. This just came up on Twitter. And oh my gosh, it's the power of the internet. There's all these people going, well, this is absolutely what happened. Well, the scene was never filmed. Well, the BBC turned around and went, we don't want this scene. Da, 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 da. Um, and it was like, none of that's true. So basically, how it came about, as far as I could remember, he says, with my memory being awful. Um, <laughs> A, or sadly, a, a man was killed near Trafalgar Square for being gay. He was basically um, beaten up, um, beaten to death, uh, I think by some teenagers. Um, and there was a, uh, what do you call it, a vigil for him in Trafalgar Square. So this would be, when was the Nightmare Man, 2000? And... It would have been start of Matt, uh, just after Matt Smith's. First series, probably 2010. So 2010, 2010, 2010, 2010, 2011, 2011 yeah. so it'd been 29, 2009 or 2010. Um, and it was awful. And I think I'd come out by then because I didn't come out till quite late. And I think I'd come out by then. Um, and it was just a really horrific thing that happened. And there was a vigil in Trafalgar Square which was beautiful. Went to this vigil in Trafalgar Square. Um, we had candles, there's hundreds, thousands of people there. Um, and I remember <laughs> I was stood on one of the fountains because 
shut your face, Jack. I'm slightly shorter than average, only slightly. And I was sitting on the fountain so I could see. And Russell T. Davis walked past. So I was one of the few people who's ever seen the top of Russell T. Davis's head, because he's obviously a giant. <laughs> and um, I was standing on this fountain. I looked down and went, Russell? He's like, Joe? Hello. So I got down and we were talking. And um, I just said, it, I just think it's, I, I want to do more. I want to do more than just have a vigil. This is, you know, such a horrible thing that's happened. And Russell the next day emailed me and said, if we want to do more, why don't we make, suggest that Luke could be gay? You know, and it's so, it's so weird because Sergio Adventures feels like it was five minutes ago, but it was a lifetime ago in terms of that sort of thing. You know, now you just don't bat an eyelid. You have gay characters and stuff. Um, although it's only a couple of years since I was told, well, I know the characters gay in the book, but obviously we don't want that. And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> okay, thank you. For, thank you for that. Um, but yes, so Luke, so uh, Russell wrote those three lines. Uh, is it three lines? It's, uh, yeah, Sarah Jane says, maybe you'll find yourself a girlfriend. Because I think there'd already been a line about you'll make new friends. That was the important message, mm. was that Luke will make new friends. He will find his new family at university, and that won't, mean his old family don't exist anymore because that's the whole point of life moving on you make your new friends um and we tweet it and it was tweets to um and maybe you'll find you you'll find lots of new friends and maybe even a girlfriend and luke went or a boyfriend and sarah jane went i don't care as long as it's not savine and it was filmed and it was lovely except it wasn't lovely because what it was was luke tentatively comes out and Sarah Jane's response was I don't care it was the phrasing of it it was and what it was was in that day and age it was too big so I'm writing a kid's show at the moment where I'm casually insinuating one of the boys is bisexual he says you're beautiful to girls and boys he flirts with girls and boys there's no qualms about it hopefully it'll make it to the thing right in that but 15 years ago, whenever it was when Sarah Jane happened, it was like, to have a boy say, I might be gay, and to have his parent turn around and say, I don't care, as long as it's not Savine, it just felt wrong, and felt too big a thing for you then to put Louis in a car and drive off with K-9 on the roof, or whatever it was, K-9 in the boot, was he? You know, it was like, to go from literally a boy, this character we've followed since he was an absolute child, this character we've followed on this journey, and for him to say, Mum, Clyde, Rani, best friends. He's basically saying, <clears throat> I'm probably gay. I might be gay. I'm definitely bisexual. If I'm saying this, I'm definitely not 100% straight. I'm probably gay. And for them to go, bye. Um, you know, it was that in that day and age, that was just not, not good. Um, but Luke is canonically gay. You know, that's been done in Farewell, so Jane Smith. Spoiler alert, it's there in the Rani adventures. We mentioned Luke and his husband. Um, you know, Luke was canonically gay. And that happened because of that scene in The Nightmare Man. That was the scene where he went, Luke is gay. Um, so there. And also, he started wearing neckerchiefs, so he's very clearly gay. <laughs> when he came back, he put this glamorous little neckerchief on, I'm like, oh, well, yeah. No, no grandchildren there, Sarah Jane Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's as it should be. You know, children should be able to see that on the screen, what yes. have you. So I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited to hear all that that show is that you're writing now and uh, see what see what comes of that because it's like I say, children should be able to see it. They should. Yeah, yeah, you know? and and I think what what needs to be seen because I'm a child of Section 28, so I didn't come out till I was gone 30 because I didn't know what gay was. I grew up in Yorkshire. There were no gays near me. Um, didn't watch EastEnders, which was the only gay on television. Um, you know, I I grew up in a, a totally not absolutely confused what I was, why I felt the way I did. And I think it's so important that it's so, it's not even a woke representation, blah, 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 blah. it's like just seeing different types of children on television uh, for kids to watch, just seeing someone in a wheelchair, you know, it's like, I didn't know anybody in a wheelchair. So if you saw someone in a wheelchair, you were like, oh my gosh, that person's in a wheelchair. Whereas if you see someone in a wheelchair on telly, you're like, oh, right, yeah, it's just, that's life. You know, there are people who use wheelchairs, uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, and I do think it would be, you know, with with sexuality, um, you know, to see, and it's not just about seeing Luke being gay, it's about seeing Clyde and Rani 
not not questioning it. There's no, there's literally not an issue there. He's still their best friend. Um, and that's such an important thing to show. 